Hello and welcome to the UK Blade Show. We are in day two filming with Will of Catcherside Cutlery and this video is sponsored by the following people. Please click the links in the description below. This video is all about cold forging, so get ready to be wowed, grab a beer or a cup of coffee depending on what time of the day you're watching this and enjoy the show. Hello, welcome back to uh, Catcherside Cutlery in uh, deepest, darkest Hereforidshire. And um, we're continuing where we left off. So these um, blades, we left these in a, fo whoa, in a forged state. And um, I'm just gonna get these because that's a mild acid on there. So these are, I'll show you quite briefly before my fingers start melting. But um, you can see they're scale free, so and in an annealed state. Just give it's not very strong that acid anymore, otherwise I'd obviously be concerned for my fingers. But it was when it was new, but it's uh, quite a number of years old now. Just a muriatic acid I use, which is hydrochloric acid basically. But I say this is you know completely lost its potency, so you can just leave stuff in there overnight. You can see it's taken all the scale off and uh, it's not, you know, it's not really eaten into the metal. It, it would eventually eat into the metal very, very slowly. It, it attacks the scale. See how clean that is on that iron? Just completely, you can see it's passivated, pickled, that's what it's called. Industry, industry standard, mate, industry standard. So next thing, I've just got to tweak the profile a little bit on these and then we go to the proper cold forging then, because these are annealed. So fully cold and just go over all this, where you've got slight differences in the thickness of this edge, but the cold forging will just bring all that down to a uniform thickness. It'll leave a really good, pretty good surface finish on there already, but you see that where scale's been hammered in, it'll sort of take most of that out. So you've got a nice surface finish that shows the hammer marks, uniform thickness. That's what we're going to do now. So, oh, let's give those another little rinse of pearl. Yeah, it's, it's insanely good, this one. The only problem we're going to have with this, well, it's still nice and thick there, because there's a limit. You've got to play with this, this bevel, because it's a low bevel. But we're going to start, it's so thick up there, we're going to start to be touching that spine. So we're going to have to keep that bevel super low on this one, because it's, it's such extreme geometry, that one. So off the cuff, because it's weird when you're filming. And this one was a little bit unintentional. I intended that to be a lot thicker there, because I've used a lot of metal for this one. And it's, it's got just rather large in its proportions. But it's still nice and thick there. Yeah, it's going to be pretty sexy, that one. It's going to be like a big, big old school Giotto, big tall, and that's the Damascus he one, so that'll be nice. It's a very nice old school Japanese profile, that one. It's a, a beefy Japanese style Giotto profile, that and just that kind of coming almost parallel with the spine. So you've got a nice flat spot and then a nice usable bit of belly on the knife. So this is looking good. This one very tall as well. It's looking good. And I'll probably make this one a bit more pointy, a bit more aggressive looking. So it's a little bit more fashionable, yeah, I say. <laughs> <clears throat> but I know a lot of people who will love that profile. next oh cold forging it's the fun part so um, and it's sort of like it's the other word the other word for cold forging is planishing so you're kind of polishing you know it's a nice association with polishing well when I when I first started doing cold forging because there's a lot you know in general it's for the surface finish that's the primary reason for it I think a lot of people get a bit muddled up because there's cold forging at various stage in Japanese stuff that people will 
largely see on the internet. And one of them is also descaling. So that process that I did in acid on an annealed bit of metal, you could kind of do that on my um, stump by just bending the metal one way, hollowing it one way, bending it the other, hollowing it out the other way, and all the scale pops off. So that's a, another use of a sort of cold forging. Uh, people will say grain refinement, and it's definitely true that cold forging is, a, you know, there's studies with, that people have done with rolling mills, and it is definitely a grain refining element. I've not found any advantage that that would give over heat cycling, like modern steels really, you know, you can see, you can actually see it, you know, you can break a piece of metal that's not been heat cycled and see it's got a pretty exploded grain from the forging. Whereas if you only do it, even if you only do it once, it, it you'll see that grain immediately refined and then three times you've got a sort of, it's as refined as it can be. So you've got these elements so it certainly doesn't do any harm. So there's definitely, there's, that is, and the, I've thought about this because I was a bit dismissive because of course when you heat treat it, you're raising the temperature up. So you think, and that's one of the arguments is, um, oh well, but you're just heating it up again anyway. So how is it grain refining? But you are when you're heat cycling. And the other thing is when you finally quench it, you're not letting it cool down again. It's heating up to its, you know, you need to do a good heat treatment. It's not over soaked, it's a nice temperature so you don't explode the grain. You know, it's the same with heat cycling. You're heating it up and cooling it down. So the fact that you're heating it up and it's not cooling down again and you're quenching it, it doesn't make any difference. If you've, whether you're forging for grain refinement or heat cycling, you know, if that's it, I don't, I don't notice personally any improvement because I'm heat cycling. You know, I'm perfectly happy with the way my grain is and it's, it's not gonna be doing the grain any harm. I know that. The other thing that people will say is not so important with that because that's a, a vague tool steel, but um, in iron, wrought iron, is it's the cold working of the cladding is stiffening it up. So it's a way of getting some hardness. It's sort of adding tension to the cladding. And whether that benefits your process or not is largely up to you. It's if you find that'll be the order of which you do things. So in this case, we're actually gonna go straight. We're gonna do the cold forging. So it's gonna be sort of rigidized and have those tensions. And this is another thing where you think, well, that's bollocks because you're only gonna heat it up again. Do you know what I mean? When you, when you quench it and then it's lost. But no, because you're not letting it cool down again. So it's the same. So I do actually, I'm, I'm a believer. Whether it helps in your material that you're using, it's, you know, you have to find out for yourself really. But certainly rigidizing this extremely thin forged iron is, is pretty good. So giving it that tension, as long as it's even, you've got even temp, uh, I've, I've found that it can actually help keep things straighter. But with, with iron, it, it, it works. So, and it makes it nice because we can get a really good surface finish and then we can go straight into clay and heat treatment, which is nice. So I'm basically gonna do the forging again, as it were. I'm gonna start in the hollow and then um, bring it into the edge and bring it up into the spine. And it, you go over all the forging again and you affect everything. You can move it quite a lot with cold forging. You see it's like moving the profile up. So now I've got to work it into the spine now. Looking good. So the last thing I'll do is um, just even out this edge and into that spine with the um, slightly easier to flatten stuff in here. Very smooth, pretty even, got a little bit of a thin bit, bit thick there still. So I'm gonna give it another little go.
Very good. So I've got, um, yeah, a few things flying out. Could probably get that a bit straighter under the hammer. Might be a little mark there, but let's have a little go. I can forge that in a little bit. Okay, and that'll come out with the, um, get my trusty hammer. Okay, so ready to sort of proper, straightening proper on that one. I'll just do the same to like this one. you guys are enjoying the video and if you are we have to thank the sponsors that made this video possible we've got john from multi-tool products very good sponsor of ours thank you very much john graham clark of clark knives is also another sponsor of this video they do professional heat treatment but also offer ready to grind damascus billet last but definitely not the least is dave from gfs knife supplies thank you very much dave gfs knife supplies is a family run business it's him his brother and his dad you can also follow them on instagram they are a fantastic one-stop shop for all your knife making needs including the sanding belts obviously the steel stock that you need for knife making the handle materials that you use for it single face rock blade heat kiln and also a fantastic selection of quenching oil they have it all they have really quick delivery they ship worldwide so don't forget to check out their brand new website all the links are in the description below thank you guys for sponsoring the video now back to the show see that difference where uh, in the tooling so it leaves a perfectly flat finish pneumatic hammer and obviously my hammer with round tooling it's taking little bites which is nice i think we're about yeah about done so there you go sort of will it into shape don't you hi this is vince from the uk blade show if you're enjoying the video don't forget to hit that like button <laughs>